เป็นได้ยินดีมากดีมากดีมากโอเคเพอร์เฟกได้ค่ะงั้นเดี๋ยวอูจะได้สต็อปแชร์ก่อนขอบคุณมากค่ะค่ะโอเคอืมคนยังมาไม่พร้อมเลยถึงเวลาแล้วเอ้ย yeah it's time but uh we Uh, Dr. Chinrat, so yes. all panelists are already joining. So I just would like to confirm about uh, David. Is he joining already? I I didn't see him in the room, but I he confirmed me by email that that uh, he will join before the before we start <laughs> to test the system. Okay, me, thank you. Let me check with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Kumpin. So actually, uh, it's already time to start the session. So I would like to hand over to Dr. Chindra to start. Over to you, Dr. Chindra. Thank you so much. Okay. We start now. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. สวัสดีค่ะ Hello. Good afternoon and good morning. Welcome to this special session. On circular economy transformation from policy to action, organized by the Solid Waste Management Association of Thailand, in conjunction with our partner Three Rings, I'm Jindara Taylor, Vice President of the Solid Waste Management Association of Thailand, and I'm delighted to be here working in partnership with our partner Three Rings. The main objective of the uh, Solid Waste Management Association of Thailand is to work with public, private, and other sector, as well as international partner, to accelerate the sustainable waste management in Thailand. Thank you very much for joining this session, featuring distinguished speakers from various sector. Each speaker will speak for 15 minutes each, and we will then have a Q&A at the end. So please keep your question coming, so we have an interactive session. Thailand introduced the National Roadmap on Solid Waste Management in 2015. Since then, we have had several national strategy and action plan for waste and waste plastic management. In particular, the waste plastic management roadmap for 2018 to 2030. This plan aim at reducing or banning single-use plastic product and increasing the recycling rate of plastic waste. In addition, the Bio-Circular Green Economic Model, or BCG, has been introduced by the research community and promoted by Thai government as a new economic model for inclusive, sustainable growth for Thailand. It capitalized on Thailand's strength in biological diversity and uh, conform with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. It also aligns with the sufficiency economy philosophy, which is a key principle of Thailand social and economic development. Introducing circular economy principle in into the production, trade, and consumption within the waste hierarchy of reduce, reuse, recycle can help provide solution to the current unsustainable production and consumption pattern. This special session will examine policy and supporting measure 
as well as implementation of circular economy in various sectors. I'm absolutely delighted to introduce our first speakers, Professor Dr. Oratai Chuan Parit, President of the, Thai, of the Solid Waste Management Association of Thailand and Professor at Jualongkorn University. And the topic is an enhancement of plastic packaging waste segregation performance for closed loop recycling. The floor is yours, Professor Oratai. Could you please mute? You, you, you're muted. Professor Olatai, you are muted. Yeah. Thank you very much. May I share the light? Mm Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, the topic of my presentation today is an enhancement of plastic packaging with segregation performance for coarse loop recycling. Since the birth of plastic industry in 1950, the copper production has increased in the monthly. Uh, in 2017, copper plastic production was about 380 million tons and is expected to uh, 1,300 tons by million ton by 2,100. Plastic health saving resort and life, especially uh, in food and transport sector. The last application, the largest application for plastic is as packaging material. Uh, however, only 14% of plastic waste is recycled, with only 2% achieve cost loop recycling or circularity. The negative impact of plastic are plastic share of oil and gas consumption of about 6% of global oil and gas production. And it also share 1% of global greenhouse gas emission. Moreover, 8 million tons of plastic waste is leaked to the sea each year and cause impact to the environment, health, and economic. Thailand consumes plastic about 5.5 million tons and about 41% are packaging plastic products. Uh, from material for analysis, You can see that uh, most of plastic waste go to landfill, about 63%, and go to incineration, 16%. About 20% was recycled. From uh, COVID-19 pandemic, plastic packaging packaging waste increased from 96 grams per day per person in 
2019 to 100 uh, gram per day per person in last year. You can see that uh, plastic bag take biggest portion of plastic packaging waste uh, account for 1.1 million ton, followed by uh, plastic bottle and cup. The objective of this study is to enhance the performance of plastic packaging waste segregation and recycling using a closed loop recycling approach in the Yong province. The Yong province located on the coastal zone uh, about 200 kilometers from Bangkok. Is the location of plastic producer and they have complete facility for plastic recycling. Uh, we implement our work in Tapma municipality, Leong City municipality, and Wangwa community. This is this three area is a pilot project of my study. Leong have plastic waste about 50,000 50, ton per year and the lack of segregation of plastic waste exhaust. What are we implement? Uh, there are two main tasks in this study. The first task is actor network analysis. The second task introduce strategy and activity to enhance plastic waste management more circularity. And the third task, capacity building and recommendation. From the first task, actor network analysis, we interview uh, many stakeholders concerned in plastic waste management in the Yong province and we also identify physical property of plastic waste that can be sold or can be recycled. From this task, we can get data on barrier and constraint to enhance code loop recycling for community level. The second task, uh, we develop small plastic waste compactor and plastic cleaning machine. And we also uh, develop plastic waste circularity guidebook. This guidebook is a guideline for collecting, sorting, and storing plastic waste. We uh, introduced this technology in three community and one school in Leong province. For actor network analysis, we interview uh, many agencies, both central and local government, such as uh, Pollution Control Department, Leong Provincial Office for Local Administrative, and many municipalities. For economic network, we interview junk shop, waste bank, waste collector, and selling and also recycle plastic factory. For social network, we introduce uh, people in community, school, and NGO, such as PPP Plastic, the Federation of Thai Industry, and Tip NC. What are we found? We found that the problem of plastic waste management in the Yong province are low price of plastic waste, lack of awareness to separate plastic waste as household, lack of incentive to sort or carry out recycling of the shop, labor shortage. Uh, most of uh, people want to work 
in industrial sector. So waste management sector, they have a problem about uh, labor shortage. And we also have the problem because uh, COVID-19 outbreak, because most of activity have been stopped. We also found that there are three factors that are influencing the successful management of plastic waste. First, strong community network to support working in the area. Second, the intensive support of local government and private company by driving such initiative activity for plastic waste collecting, sorting, and recycle. And third, leader initiation and strong motiva motivation person support. This leader is then a firm influencer, driving policy and recycling activity in the community. Uh, this slide, this picture shows a uh, flowchart of plastic waste management in Layong province. Most of plastic waste mix in municipal solid waste and was collected and by uh, munis municipality. Some of plastic waste was taken a segregation and sell to the junk shop and contaminate plastic waste uh, go to the young treatment plant. For some household, they sorting uh, plastic and sell to waste bank or waste picker. Waste bank and waste picker uh, sell recyclable plastic to junk shop and junk shop will uh, separate according to material type and clean clean plastic waste and sell to recycle plastic pan for recycling what are we what are the enhancement result from actor network analysis we focus on uh, three actors, such as collector, waste collector, waste bank, and waste picker to enhance plastic waste separation by training them for collect separation of plastic waste using handbook that we uh, develop. We also introduce technology such as plastic compactor and cleaning machine in order to improve plastic waste quality. You can see that uh, from this picture, big, big plastic waste are low value about 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 US dollar per kilogram. For high price of plastic waste, according to quality and cleanliness, they can get high income. If uh, people separate waste according to plastic material before sale to the junk shop, for example, clean pet bottle, LDPE film price at uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 US dollar per kilogram. And for SDPE bottle, PP cup, the price is about 0 0.3 US dollar per kilogram. So people can get high income if they separate plastic waste according to plastic material and clean it before sale. And for waste collector, selling can reduce stalling area 
and reduce transportation costs by using the compactor. You can see that one ton of plastic can reduce solid area about 28 square meter and they can carry uh, compact plastic to uh, uh, sell at junk shop. We can reduce skin, uh, skin house gas emission from an enhancement of plastic packaging waste segregation for coast roof recycling. Yes, that's all my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Oratai, for uh, to me a fantastic presentation and case study of closed loop recycling of plastic packaging, which a major contributor to plastic pollution in Thailand. So I already see some question coming. Please keep your question coming for our Q and A session at the end. Our next speaker is. Dr. Thanapong Duangmani, Director of the Mafa of Environmental Policy at Mafa Luang Foundation on the topic of bio circular green economy activity at Doi Tung Development Project. Over to you, Dr. Thanapong. Thank you very much. Let me share my screen. You, you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. Hello everyone and th thank you very much for the host to, for inviting us to this event. The topic for today's presentation is practice of uh, BCG economy policy at the uh, Doitung De Development Project. And well, we are a social enterprise governed by uh, Mafa Luong Foundation. So at Doitung Development Project, we can achieve that by uh, becoming zero waste to landfill and doing uh, circular economy activities. And uh, of course, my name is Sana Pong. I'm Jack, you can call me Jack. So at the project, we make products such as uh, ceramic pillowcase, uh, tablecloth, runners, um, gift, box, gift boxes, uh, notebook made from mulberry paper, and of course, coffee macadamia uh, product as well, as you may know in the shelf at the, the supermarket. And of course, the tourism is a, one of the latest destination in Chiang Rai. Um, our annual sale is around 500 million, but about 15 million US dollars, which, which consider us to be a small um, enterprise. Um, we are, uh, besides us, uh, being an enterprise, we are also a social enterprise because the profit that we make uh, go into helping uh, people at the project to better their livelihood and helping to create more environmental development activities, uh, which in turn creating more sustainable life uh, for them. So uh, um, before talking about the PCG policy and activities at the project, I would like to provide a few information about the foundation. So the foundation, um, the Mephalong Foundation was founded uh, in 1972 by the late uh, Her, Royal, Her Royal Highness Princess Mother. Our aims are to improve the life of people living in poverty and deprived of uh, uh, livelihood opportunities. We aim to help people to help themselves in sustainable manner, foster um, harmony between human and nature, um, and also create a social enterprise that generate profit uh, for businesses toward social development activities and the, the Dardun Development Project was the first um, social enterprise that we created. Um, the project is located in Chiang Rai province, the northernmost province in, in Thailand. Um, the project covers uh, 150 square kilometers and has about 11,000 people, six ethnic groups living in uh, 29 villages. The area, were, uh, our, the, the area also share 24 kilometers of common border with Myanmar. 
So back in 1988, um, when the project was started, the area was denoted mountain um, due to the lack of um, opportunity and, and property of people in the area. Approximately 50% of forest and Doitung was cut down by slash and burn for corn farming and opium growing. This was because people didn't have enough income to sustain themselves and their families. So um, knowing the root cause of the problem, the foundation began to provide the people with alternative decent jobs and opportunity uh, to better uh, their livelihood. Since then, the people do not need to cut down forests any longer because they already have enough income to sustain their livelihood. It took us 20 years to reforest the land and in 19, as picture show in 19, uh, in 2019, and now we still have forest area of over 80% of land and striking balance between uh, people and nature. So fast forward to today, uh, 30, 34 years of, uh, has passed. Now we have five businesses, uh, food, cafe, um, handicraft, horticulture, and tourism under the same Doi Tung brand. Um, this to create more jobs for different groups of people and to diversify the risk. Um, however, today problems are so different from those 30 years ago. Now in Thailand, we face new set of problems, which is the environmental sustainability. So, so um, our waste management is not so sustainable. According to uh, Pollution Control Department of Thailand, in uh, 2020, 15% of our waste was still not properly managed. It's either open, open dump or open burn. 41% 40, that was said to be properly managed get dumped in landfill, create, creating um, methane, which is 28 times more potent than CO2 uh, as a heat trapping gas. <clears throat> um, beside, beside, the, um, beside dumping waste into landfill is against um, circular economy concept, which aim to reduce the use of natural resource that currently needed 1.7 times more than it actually exists. So as an organization, we have policy to strengthen our commitment on um, environmental development, which emphasize on circular economy. Our strategy include 4R policy, reduce, reuse, repair, recycle, and also upcycle the value of our waste. We also believe in not sending our waste to landfill and at the same time, minimize burning fossil-based waste. Uh, even to create energy. We also aim to reduce the use of single-use plastic and produce high-quality environmental-friendly products from our communities. By uh, following such uh, policy, we have got this. 87% uh, of our waste management has, was, was complied with the circular economy concept, leaving only 13% as um, to to the incineration. So uh, as most, of, most of the incineration go to waste to energy project. Um, fossil energy was replaced by renewable one by 9.1% uh, and we also managed to uh, reduce greenhouse gas emission by 500 tons CO2 equivalent per year. And uh, wastewater is also reused by 5%. And we also save about 80,000 US dollars per year. This is how we did it. So since October uh, 2018, our office, factories, and tourism area at Doi Tung Development Project has no longer sent waste, our waste to landfill. We could achieve this by eliminate, eliminating um, the general waste. Normally in Thailand, we have four types of waste, uh, recyclable, biodegradable, general waste, hazardous waste. And the general waste is the one that has no purpose and usually gets sent to land, landfill or incineration. At Doi Tung Development Project, we separate general waste into three other types, namely RDF, refuse derived fuel, which is energy waste, 
clean but not recyclable. Dirty waste, dirty food containers, whether they are plastic or paper, and toilet waste, things from toilet, female sanitary napkins, uh, adult diapers, and surgical masks. One of the reasons why people don't separate their trash is because they don't believe in it. Why do we need to separate when everything will go to the same place? So to tackle this, we set up a material recovery facility so that we can make sure that every type of waste gets used and is at its fully potential. First, waste from our uh, office, kitchen, factories, and tourism area, which is the main source of waste, gets separated into six types. Mm -hmm. Then at the, at the recovery for, um, material recovery facility, we separate into 44 types according to their utilization. Recyclable gets separate into 32 types to sell at higher price. It's a different kind of uh, glasses, uh, plastic, paper, metal, and so on. Um, we also manage food waste according to food waste hierarchy. Reduce comfort, reduction come first, then donation to people, then animal. What left? is for energy production and then become a fertilizer. No landfill and not straight to fertilizer right away. After human consumption, our kitchen, uh, our kitchen separate uh, food waste into vegetable cuttings and uh, food scrap, uh, which are fed to our animals, include, including um, chicken, duck, uh, earthworm, black soil fire lava, and then uh, after, after everything left, we, we make fertilizer. So for dirty, for dirty plastic uh, waste, uh, dirty waste or plastic containers, paper containers, we clean it by washing and drying. Then it is separate into RDF and recyclable. Otherwise, this waste will go directly to landfill or incineration. For RDF, there are two types. The types that we can burn uh, using our own biomass burner at our factory to satisfy the need for hot water and hot air, and the type that we cannot burn by ourselves because they are plastic. Um, this type would get sent to cement plant, which is which with at uh, in the province nearby uh, Lampang to replace the use of coal. For hazardous waste, uh, it will get handled by an authorized waste management company. For toilet waste, which is about 3% of all waste, this would get burned and uh, by, by using our a low um, emission incinerate, incinerator uh, around once a week. So however, if, uh, if the, we uh, talk about circular economy, <coughs> waste management is, is only part of it. And uh, from, from the diagram, you may already recognize, uh, recognize it. Uh, this is this is this one was adopted or adapted from a famous diagram from Ellen MacArthur Foundation. The diagram show material and energy from our supplier that are used uh, to make our products. Um, by by our handicraft factory, and uh, the product then get sent to our store, then go to our customer in the, in the middle, and the uh, customer then use the product. And, and some of the waste gets sent to landfill or incineration. So circular economy required to reduce input uh, material, energy, and waste, uh, circulating the use of natural resource as long as it can be. So at Doi Tung, we do, do that by um, becoming zero waste to landfill and by doing many, many activities to reduce, reuse, repair, recycle our waste, such as food waste, macadamia shell, uh, coffee, pulp, wastewater, um, paper cups, uh, cardboard uh, to produce raw materials and renewable energy in biological cycle, this one. And on the other hand, in the technical cycle, we create up, um, upcycle products such as keychain, notebook, ceramic, um, bags, shoes, pillows, pillowcases, and gift box from waste. So this is an example 
uh, to supply our energy need, we use uh, solar cell. I used to also use dry bamboo for energy and also um, macadamia shell. This is this one we use a lot. And we also turn our um, used cooking oil into um, biodiesel. Um, we also produce vermicompost and normal kind of compost as well. We um, use uh, waste as natural dye. Um, we also raise um, black soil fly to, uh, as an animal feed. Uh, very high protein, which is one convert food waste into high protein animal feed. So we also this we also use this cardboard um, cardboard box to produce storytelling paper bags and notebooks, bags and car bags and carpet from recycled uh, plastic tray from macadamia shell. So inside the factory, we also do closed loop recycling such as the use of leftover yarn, cloth, patches, um, uh, and ceramic mold for, produ uh, for products making and construction. For open loop recycling, we use recycled polyester yarn to make various types of carpets. So each, even, even paper cups from our cafe uh, can be used to make a gift box. So at Doitung, all employee need to attend a workshop to um, experience trash separation. We do not limit the activities by ourselves. We also expand to others, um, mm -hmm. all 29 villages in the area and other companies that visit us. So finally, even though we are not perfect, we are doing the best we can as much as we can. We, and we hope that everyone can do the same too. Because as a human, uh, we cannot afford to be in linear economy anymore. We need to be circular, not just uh, for the money, but for our sustainability, um, where we can meet the need uh, for ourselves without compromising the need for our future generation. So at Doitung, we want, want to produce product that make okay. the world better. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tanakong, for such a, I would say, inspiring and comprehensive case study involving social enterprise and BCG activity at Doi Tung. So again, please keep your question coming for our Q&A at the end. Our next speaker is Dr. Vijan Sitma Chaya president of the Thailand Environment Institute on the topic of circular economy policy, background and update. Dr. Vijan had to attend an urgent uh, government meeting this, today. So he sent this recording for his presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to join online conference uh, of the 8th 3R International Scientific Conference on Material Cycle and Waste Management, a special session on circular economy to share my knowledge on circular economy policy and action for plastic waste management in Thailand. The outline of my presentation will cover uh, status of waste and plastic waste management in Thailand, uh, Thailand BCG model, uh, circular economy in action, and big rock uh, project. Uh, in Thailand, we generate solid waste around uh, 28 million tons a year, with including 2 million uh, tons of uh, uh, plastic waste. Uh, 2 million tons of plastic waste uh, go to recycle only 0 0.5 million tons mostly about uh, or only 25% of plastic waste. Another 75% uh, uh, go to landfill, open dump, and lead to the uh, environment, uh, mostly uh, plastic waste. You can uh, take a look here, the challenge of Thailand, like other uh, developing countries, uh, there are a lot of problems on waste management, uh, such as public uh, uh, awareness, uh, improper infrastructure, and developed 
of proper technology innovation and insufficient uh, integrated uh, co collaboration uh, open uh, burning of the uh, 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 garbage side uh, plastic liquid from uh, unsustained management of plastic to the environment is also a common and regional challenges uh, these uh, including accumulation uh, of uh, uh, plastic or microplastic into uh, environment and harmful to wildlife and uh, accumulation uh, in organism and finally uh, uh, impact to human body. Uh, plastic contain of uh, toxic substances. Uh, some kind of plastic can stay in the uh, environment uh, and the ocean more than 400 years. New Zealand during uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic in Thailand, uh, we cannot refill plastic usage, especially for the disease protection, uh, such as mask, uh, PE, or even food delivery packaging. Uh, mismanagement uh, and uh, capacity of local authority to handle uh, such kind of uh, problem is uh, a key issue. Uh, you can uh, take a look uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, uh, plastic waste in the country uh, increasing uh, rapidly 15% uh, or uh, 6,000 uh, uh, tons uh, a year. And uh, the important thing is the, uh, the percentage of recycled plastic is decreased from 25% to uh, 19% by uh, plastic waste increasing, especially from the uh, uh, food uh, de delivery uh, business. Uh, Nick, I would like to uh, share on the uh, BCG bio circular green economy as the national agenda of the country. Uh, from COP26, Thailand, by our Prime Minister, has committed uh, the new target on the uh, greenhouse gas reduction uh, for national determined contribution or NDC from 20 uh, to 40 percent reduction. Uh, and we are going to move. Uh, to the carbon neutrality by uh, 2050 and long term net zero greenhouse gas emission by 2065. BCG will use as a different mechanism uh, of the country. Uh, uh, Thai government strong promote country development by keeping a high priority to a new economic model as BCG. Uh, model uh, develop uh, three area I mentioned uh, earlier uh, B uh, is the bioeconomy, C is circular economy, and T is the green economy. Uh, BCG economic model is uh, implementing as a post COVID 19 based on uh, the principle of sufficient economy philosophy of the late uh, King Ramanai and support such development goal, the uh, major area are uh, cover uh, food security, uh, health security, energy security, employment security, and sustainable natural resources uh, and environment. The country also will move from uh, unstable uh, linear economy uh, to more stable circular economy, uh, which transfer from take, make, uh, dispose of linear economy uh, to make you return of circular economy model. Uh, the energy sources will also move from fossil based uh, to uh, renewable sources. Why we need circular economy? The country is facing of uh, resource security with uh, overconsumption, uh, security of the pollution and emission of greenhouse gas at the same time, the economy will uh, benefit and support sustainable development, maximizing resource efficiency, reducing pollution, uh, as well as uh, minimizing global change impact. Uh, this will create a new uh, economic opportunity in line with uh, national uh, policy. Uh, you can uh, take a look here, the driving mechanism 
mechanism of the circular economy in BCG model, uh, 3C approach, including C1, is uh, uh, causing uh, the loop uh, with the reduction of uh, one uh, of four of the current national resources. C2 is uh, creating new economic growth of about 1% GDP uh, increasing. Uh, and uh, TC is uh, combating uh, climate change and the reduction of greenhouse gas emission of about 1 million ton uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, for plastic waste, we are implementing the cost loop system that support national roadmap on plastic waste management uh, for the year 2018 to year 2020, which the uh, target one is reducing and replacing uh, some single plastic by using environmental friendly product. And target two is the uh, uh, recycle target plastic waste by applying circular economy principle at 100% by 2026. PPP plastic stand for public private partnership for sustainable plastic and waste management initiated by the Federal of Thai Industry and Thailand Business Council for Sustainable Development. The forum had been started at the World Environmental Day on the June 2018. Uh, the component of PPP plastic, including more than uh, 40 organizations from uh, association organization, government sector, private uh, sector, international organization, and educational uh, institution. There are a number of circular economy models implemented by PPP plastic, including the uh, business model, like a uh, counter model, including the uh, uh, provinces. Uh, community and uh, provincial based model like Rayong uh, uh, in the eastern part of Thailand, uh, the Proy uh, uh, project, and plastic load from unrecycled uh, plastic. Uh, here, just show you uh, that we are implementing the uh, big city uh, model, like a comparative model in uh, a business model for uh, plastic and waste management. Uh, using a uh, circular economy approach for different sub uh, model are uh, uh, department store, or hotel, uh, hospital, and office uh, building. Uh, during the implementation of the uh, project, there are seven participating uh, building uh, that we can uh, decrease up based around 21% and can recycle uh, passive more than uh, 50% is uh, roughly around uh, 358 ki kilogram of uh, uh, plastic recycle uh, per month. Uh, Rayong model is uh, implemented at the Wu province. Uh, this uh, a pilot that we wish to work with the government agency and local authority that uh, we can explain to uh, and to other uh, province as well. Uh, for the DOC project, a project named uh, Magic Canvon, uh, we create a plastic uh, waste uh, collecting system of uh, 12 film or packaging uh, plastic. Uh, currently, we can collect plastic waste at about uh, uh, 19,000 uh, kilogram uh, of plastic. That the value of plastic is uh, five baht per kilogram that will go to the marine life conservation uh, program. For a recycle a plastic or uh, plastic road project is also developed and implemented uh, right now in the process of testing environmental impact and certification of uh, government uh, agency. The driving mechanism of the uh, BCG circular economy are uh, co-benefits uh, of the uh, key, uh, key project and development pilot model, uh, such as plastic, plastic waste I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, develop uh, circular economy platform, uh, public private uh, partnership, uh, build up uh, the uh, circular economy society and citizen, 
And the last but not least, but most important is the, how we can create the uh, circular economy uh, market. Uh, here, just uh, show you the big rock uh, project that uh, we set our indicator to reduce national resource consumption by a percent uh, within 2027. And the second one is uh, create uh, investment opportunity for the uh, employment of new uh, uh, economic uh, model, increase the GDP. And uh, the third one is uh, reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission at least 1 million ton uh, carbon dioxide uh, footprint uh, by 2027. Uh, uh, here is the, the uh, major uh, uh, big rock of uh, uh, our uh, uh, including uh, plastic waste, including the uh, food waste, food loss. Uh, including uh, construction uh, material that consume a lot of uh, uh, um, a lot of resource. Here is the BCG in action that already approved by the uh, cabinet, uh, including the uh, investment, including promotion and technology, uh, including the uh, development of the the platform, uh, including the. Uh, uh, circular economy facility and uh, ecosystem uh, capacity building also very important. Mm -hmm. uh, conclusion for the implementing of the uh, circular economy uh, in the country related to the policy and planning is very important. Uh, waste management uh, system, or I mentioned earlier, how we uh, develop uh, ecosystem for uh, circular economy in action, law, law and regulation uh, system in place, uh, public awareness, uh, research and innovation support, uh, private sector engagement, and the uh, incentive, for example, tech incentive. Uh, that the uh, conclusion of my presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Vijan for taking time to record this brilliant presentation, which provide us with valuable uh, insight into the circular economy and practice in Thailand. I feel we have come a long way. Our next speaker is Mr. Swain Rasmussen, founder of Starboard Thailand. And the topic is upcycling marine plastic to high value product. Over to you, Kun Swain. Yeah, thanks to all uh, the engagement and turning these negatives to positives. You know, listening to to Kun Oratai, so much information, the 139 grams per day, and uh, <laughs> Kun, Kun Jack with the forest cover, 50 to 80 percent, and, and all rest is really very encouraging. So, congrats, and also Kun Vijan's big rock. So, yeah, nice, very nice to see we are moving forward. So, going back in time, um, we were uh, there in 2017 uh, at the first ASEAN conference on reducing marine debris in the ASEAN region. You know, I'm, I'm in a water sports business and I, I love the water. So we, we think about marine debris. And, um, you know, we, we, we are listening to the younger generations and see how they feel about how we are performing. Uh, so I've been in, uh, you know, we've been educated and we have been obviously in the systems for a long time. And our 17 year old eco intern, Frida, she was so, so disappointed about the outcome of that conference. So at the closing ceremony, she stood up and she took the microphone in, in front of the ASEAN leaders, you know, the ASEAN leaders, right? And she requested initiating the first single use plastic taxation and ban. And kind of everybody was too busy to listen to the realities of what had to happen. And um, now it's five years later and we have lost five years of protection of the oceans. So that's just a sideline from what uh, the younger generation might feel about uh, our engagement and speed to market. So uh, quickly about myself, I'm, I'm born in Norway and I, I was lucky enough to spend maybe 15 years traveling the most beautiful beaches in the world, competing in windsurfing events, in, including the Long Beach in, uh, 
in Los Angeles during the Olympic Games during 84. And I've been here in Thailand for 30 years, and I've seen our Bay of Siam really suffer from plastic overload. So we are based in a little on a little lake called uh, Lake Taco, and I've been there since 1994. We are uh, we are. Uh, making uh, water sports uh, equipment and uh, selling to maybe 100 countries. Uh, the IOC, the International Olympic, Olympic Committee, awarded our, uh, our equipment its own class and its own medals for the next Olympic Games. And also World Sailing, who is the entity that covers all sailing, uh, gave our eco team. Uh, we have five people that are full on uh, focusing on the uh, on our eco activities. They gave them the World Sailing uh, Sustainability Award. So that's a, a pretty cool thing for Thailand to know that they have such an award in their hands. But you know, we are we are quite a large operator in the water sports market. So we are maybe also the number one polluter in this scene uh, because our equipment is made mainly from uh, fossil fuels. I think 80% of the products are really from oil. And we don't have a proper end of life solution. We are not at the level of Jack at Deutung. So we have a lot to learn here. And however, uh, our equipment is uh, since five years not packed in single use plastic. So that was that ended its life a long time ago. Uh, quickly, so we are um, looking at the. Uh, how we can introduce social and environmental change through blockchain. And we introduce a concept that lives on the carbon negative cello chain. At the same time, you will see a little bit about our products and our playgrounds. So I hope you will enjoy this little clip. Blue Tiki, connected. It's time to empower the community of water sports fans and future fighters. Blue Tiki is a social token that will be distributed to the community via their environmental actions and let you be part of the journey. Okay, so um, of course, blockchain is uh, what the internet was maybe, you know, 30 good years ago. It's, it is the future. It's a little bit hard for at least me to understand, but we found a way where we can actually reward environmental change. And we're encouraging our customers and the potential customers to shift from single use plastics to reusables and refillables. And the action is cleaning up current pollution issues in various ways, and they're rewarded with our uh, BTK coin and token for the positive actions that they're creating for the for the planet. And then comes the movement here. It's the and the feedback from the BTK community. It's a force made up of people who want to make change. So we are just recruiting people who really want to see if they can uh, make the world. Uh, better and that with uh, some acceleration. So more coming to the task uh, Kumpin would like us to talk about today, which is 
uh, upcycling, if that's the ocean, uh, if that's the answer to, uh, to ocean pollution. So that's obviously me down uh, at the beach. And uh, you know, you can see what we find in the back here during our uh, plastic collections. We have, we have 80 people who trolls the beaches in Shamburi most days during the year, and they are paid 18 baht per uh, piece of or per kilo uh, plastic that they find. We are not discriminating if it's the lousiest plastic or beautiful uh, uh, plastic uh, bottles, it's all the same price. So, um, however, upcycling, it can be maybe useful short term, cleaning up, uh, it's like a cleaning up session that we can uh, be in tune with for maybe the next 10 years as there's a lot to retrieve from the oceans. But it cannot be an answer to, to the future use of plastic. So one successful product, however, is together with uh, DSM. It's a Dutch company. And we have been retrieving fishing nets then from the Indian Ocean with them. And it's upcycled into something called Arculon repurposed. And we send this to our injection molders around the world. And we make different plastic parts. And they actually come out really well. They can be fins, inserts, boxes, and as you see, the little thing that a trash picker that we have on all the paddles we sell, so people can actually pick up trash when they're out in the ocean and they see something uh, that they want to, to put on the board and paddle home with. And um, since a long time, our bags are all made from, uh, from waste to wear uh, uh, old plastic bottles, but I think that that's a very general thing. Most, most companies have that now. And we've been testing to recycle all types of sandwich forms recycling EVA and EPS, but we have not been quite successful as our products need to be in, um, in good shape after five and 10 years. So sometimes we have to be a bit careful about how, uh, how uh, far we bring the experiment. Uh, yeah. Uh, and also the pump to the right, that's like a high, uh, a high velocity pump that we have also partially made out of, uh, made out of these materials fishing nets. So if you see here now, we, we, we have worked with the uh, Ocean Recovery Alliance to, uh, to look at our plastic footprint some four or five years ago. And, um, you know, carbon footprint is normal. Plastic footprint is something a little bit newer. And um, we wanted to have it available so our customers can see the plastic content in the boards something that maybe a windsurfing board or a surfboard is something magic, but you know, it's pretty much 80% fossil fuel. And um, as you can see here, the impact we have with a little bit of recycled plastic arculon is very far from doing an impact. And that's why in the meantime, we resort to picking up ocean beach trash to balance it out a bit. And sometimes we do a bit more like for our Olympic equipment, we actually pick up the same weight of plastic trash from the oceans as the weight of the product itself. And I think we do the same with all the apparel pieces. If you, if you purchase a t-shirt, we pick up 1.1 kilo of ocean uh, trash. It's the same weight, I think, as the total uh, pollution per person per year going into the ocean. But, you know, it's not enough. We are just getting started here. So, uh, the question again comes, uh, does the circle economy song allow us to continue to pollute? Because sometimes, you know, if it, if it, sounds, we, if it sounds like we can recycle the products, maybe it sounds like we can continue to use these products. And uh, yeah, that's a big question. So uh, we will know the numbers, the 9% of products that are recycled, maybe annually every year. And you know, it used to be 18 million tons going into the oceans every year. Now it's a lot more. So if you look at circular, does single use plastic belong in the circular economy? That's a big question mark to me. You know, the polymers in plastic is breaking down in each recycle process. Each time virgin plastic will be added. And, and the recycled plastics use virgin plastics. And, and that's the, and the end of the last life is quite near anyway. You can't do many cycles before it has to get uh, burned. So it's a very short circle we have here. And uh, the question if, uh, is if circular 
if it's just business as usual and not really where we want to get with like aluminium that we can recycle forever and glass forever is a different type of interest in those materials for circular economy again coming from my, my perspective and then comes the reusable some countries do not recycle at all and you know frankly speaking they may not be organized within the 20 next 25 years i'm, I'm thinking globally here now thailand different but you know we have a lot of different countries around the world anywhere from africa to south america and what we see is that probably what is what is happening in the ocean today it will be twice as much as that within the next 15 20 years and that's what worries me uh, so you know we have a focus on uh, reusables and infinitely recyclable packaging then uh, then comes that elephant in the room you know you can kind of you can maybe call it the elephant uh, in 7-eleven mm -hmm. <laughs> 7-eleven is a small place you know the elephant to make some noise in there it's the vacuum of ignorance you know we just don't think about it we're talking about maybe we are not going to use a plastic bag in 7-eleven any longer but you know uh, all the rest is packed in plastic mm -hmm. so you know that that's like it's just such a microscopic idea to think about the plastic bag so you know we are back to profit of our planet that's you know as humans it's hard for us and um, the lack of future vision in private sector and governments and uh, we can see here modern packaging put everything into some plastic uh, packaging and then we can look at classic packaging what our parents and grandparents used there was no package around you came in and you took what you needed put it into some paper or put it into some metal some places still have it but we should really consider going that way and um, and just refill use paper alloy and glass and again our parents, we can talk to them about these very ancient technologies that maybe still are ahead of the game. Economy solutions, you know, it's um, it's really a uh, question if uh, mm -hmm. plastic was no longer the cheapest option, might maybe there will be a quick change. And a tax or incentive for packaging uh, could be very nice as an incentive for companies. Mm -hmm. Just hang on here. Mm -hmm. And government drive to uh, drive to change, drive change and companies to support. You know, every producer needs to annually maybe mm -hmm. account for the plastic footprint and differentiate between the single use and the longer lifetimes. Maybe a tax on single use plastics at maybe ten percent. Mm -hmm. Maybe support companies using alternatives with ten percent. However, maybe you heard about uh, this one. It uh, came out uh, in the news <clears throat> last week, the plastic treaty, and it will be signed off in 2024. So far, as you see, 175 countries are joining and uh, change is happening, but it's not at the speed that the plastic crisis deserves. Uh, so, <clears throat> My company is Star, but we are a major plastic polluter. We have switched away from single-use plastic. We fight plastic pollution through NDO work. Weekly, we run the Trash Hero Bangkok. We run the plastic offset program. Maybe it was the first in the world. And now it's in the verification process with Vera. So we collected the 250, 240 kilos of plastic trash from Thai be beaches through that program. Next year, we hope to do 200,000 kilo in one year alone. We will move it also into Myanmar. And uh, of course, we are creating the annual plastic footprint report. And we use the recycling materials we discussed. And uh, we pick up what we can, but none of what we do is enough. We have no solution to happy end of life for our plastic products. We need to work a lot harder on fast tracking alternative materials. So therefore, we signed partnership with many different uh, good organizations. Maybe the best one, Parley for the Oceans. You would know them from, uh, from their uh, Adidas uh, connections. B Corp that you may know. SCG is a big player in, in Thailand and, and also certain entities with the UN to step it up and motivate each others. 
Parley here, you know, basically um, uh, we're trying to see if we can run with their air uh, campaign. Avoid, intercept, mm -hmm. and redesign. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to see how we can enjoy our lives and our nature a bit more respectfully mm -hmm. and come up with better solutions. We, we are here at uh, mm -hmm. Bangnatrat, kilometer 17, not so far away mm -hmm. from the airport. Join us any evening on Thursdays, uh, 4.30, most welcome. And, you know, just have fun and just never give up. We have to have fun doing these, uh, these things because they're big challenges. So thank you for, for, uh, for doing what you do. And I so much look forward to see us, uh, you know, just winning and, uh, and uh, do something great for the next generation. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Kun Suen, for, to me, such an uplifting story and disruptive thinking, and uh, it's fantastic, what I can say. Absolute music to my ear. I agree with you. We do have to keep changing and keep moving and never take things for granted. And uh, uh, upcycling is good, but it's certainly not a permanent solution. And we need to look long-term and shorter. You have given, up, uh, given us such enormous amount of food for thought. So thank you. And keep your question coming for the Q&A session at the end, okay? Yeah. Our last but not least speaker is Kun David Berg, General Manager Suet Circular Polymer Thailand. And the topic is experiences in recycling of plastic waste in Thailand. Challenges and opportunity. The floor is your Kun David. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for our introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, it should be good. Uh, so yes, thanks a lot also all the uh, panelists because you already covered a part of the topic that I would like to discuss with you on today. But still, so uh, let me uh, share my experience about running a plastic recycling factory in Thailand. So I'm talking about Suez Circular Polymer, uh, which is doing LDPE film plastic recycling for a little more than one year. Uh, as a brief summary, so we'll have a look on the scale of the problem, even if, if it has already been mentioned by uh, other panelists. And then I will share about our activities and the issues that we are facing, which uh, impeach us to reach the nominal target of the factory for the time being. Uh, so first of all, so as uh, Kun uh, Oratai just shared with us, uh, yes, so there is um, uh, significant improvement opportunities in the plastic uh, circularity uh, for waste in, uh, in Thailand, especially. So you can see some, uh, some of this information. Uh, so you can see that uh, PE resins are a significant part of the plastic, uh, plastic material which are consumed in Thailand, but unfortunately, only a very small quantity uh, will be able to, to get collected for recycling our waste to energy. So uh, definitely, definitely polyethylene is a significant contributor uh, to the plastic crisis in Thailand. If we have a look, especially for the PE film, situation is even worse uh, because uh, from this information, you can see that approximately uh, 110,000 uh, tons of, of plastic bags uh, go into the ocean on a yearly, yearly, basis, on yearly basis. And a significant part of it is made for LDP also. So this is exactly the purpose of Suez Circular Polymer is to be able to uh, offer an option uh, for the plastic leakage to the ocean, especially for the, for the plastic film. So this is what we are doing. So in our plant, we are able to, to receive a flexible film like LDPE and LLDPE. This feedstock can be various kinds of plastic bags, uh, uh, shrink film, stretch film, used for logistics station, for example. 
uh, that will be able to, uh, to send to, to our process. Uh, so we've got a global capacity of 22,000 tons of plastic per year, but unfortunately, for the time being, we are, we are not able to reach these targets. Uh, so our process will be to, uh, to sort it, to wash it, uh, to shred it, to uh, melt it in order to make brand new pellets uh, in uh, uh, new pellets, which will be used by your customers to make uh, new products from plastic and to replace uh, virgin material usage. The plant has been designed to be able to operate with the lower carbon footprint and the uh, highest environmental standard as possible. So this is why we have our internal wastewater treatment station uh, to minimize our impact on the quality of the water, or sonal or solar panel to reduce our electrical consumption, for example. We apply also for various certification like global recycle standards in order to be able to provide our customers evidence uh, that we are operating uh, with, the, let's say, uh, a full understanding about where, where the whole raw material is coming from. And for each tons of pellets what we are producing, uh, we are saving approximately 1.6 tons of uh, greenhouse gases, uh, which is very significant. So if we have a look for 2021, uh, so we succeed to recycle 6,500 tons of plastic film to produce 5,300 tons of pellets. These pellets have been used by your customers in order to uh, uh, make new bags, shrink and stretch films, low pressure pies. So that's mean in total in 2021, uh, we succeed to save 8,300 tons of greenhouse gases. So maybe uh, as me, you don't know exactly how much it represents. So let's consider this is 1,000 time rotation around Earth for one person in a plane. And this is approximately also the environmental impact of the production of uh, 257,000 cell phones, which is, uh, you can imagine, very high environmental impact. And we are also able to, uh, to provide 1,000 tons of plastic credits uh, to, uh, to some companies who are willing to be uh, plastic neutral, but which are not able to, uh, to, recycle, to use only recycled material. But we can go back on this topic during the Q&A session, if you like. Still, as you, as, you sorry, as you identify, we are only at one third of the maximum capacity of the plant. Uh, why? There is three main factors. First of all, in Thailand, the collection rate for this kind of, uh, of plastic is, uh, is not enough. Uh, that means there is not enough PE film collected for recycling in Thailand. Why? Because currently in Thailand, as there is not yet extended producer responsibility to support and finance the collection and the sorting of the waste, a collection of the plastic will rely mostly on the informal sector with uh, high logistic costs, uh, lack of technical structure to segregate the waste and increase the value, and uh, uneven environmental compliance process. So for all these reasons, and as it was mentioned uh, in the comments, uh, if collection rate for plastic bottle is kind of high in Thailand, for PE film, which uh, say let's say it has a kind of bad reputation, uh, it's extremely low. We consider that between uh, maybe five to six percent of uh, uh, PE plastic film uh, will enter into circular economy after end of life. So this is a major concern for us because if we were able to receive more plastic we should be able to increase our environmental benefits. Second reason is because for the time being, uh, the quality, the, it is kind of complicated to recycle the plastic film for, let's say, uh, design reason. So I take example of uh, PET, for example, that is similar to, to PE. That means that a lot of packaging has not been designed to be able to enter into circular economy. So that means there is multi-layer film uh, with a lot of printing on it. Uh, the fact that there is no segregation of the weight at source makes uh, the collection of clean film very complicated. So for all these reasons, even if the collection rate is low, the quantity that we are receiving to the factory 
is, let's say, une, mm -hmm. uneven in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. So this is why we need to, uh, to work with the brand owner, with the uh, final user to educate them, to let them, let's say, understand what will be the environmental impact on the packaging, uh, on the circular economy and, uh, and recyclability of the, of, the, of, the, of the packaging. And third, the big factor which explains why it is so complicated uh, to, uh, to, to support circular economy is uh, for the time being, there is, let's say, no regulation in order to enforce the use of recycled material. And unfortunately, for many reasons, recycled material is more complicated to use than virgin material. Uh, for example, because the cost structure is completely different. Uh, cost structure for virgin material will be based on the price of the oil, which can vary a lot. Uh, but the uh, price of the recycled material, which will be related to the uh, collection and operation cost structure, which is completely different. But still, most of the time, uh, when the price of the virgin material is increasing, the price of the recycled material is increasing. And normally, when the price of the virgin material is decreasing, recycle will decrease. But you can see some examples, like for example here in uh, PET in Europe, because new regulation has been implemented to uh, force to have a minimum recycled content into the formulation of new bottles to, to the market. That's, un, that's a lead to uncorrelate uh, the virgin material price to the recycled material price in order to have two different index. And thanks to that, now in, uh, in Europe and for PET, uh, virgin material price is completely different for recycled material price. This is what we are willing to have in, uh, in Asia for PE, but we are still far from this target. Another important thing we need to know is the virgin material does not consider about the environmental impact. But recycled material, obviously, has a significantly better environmental impact. So this is why this price should be taken into account when purchasing um, recycled material. So yeah, way to proceed about that. So mandatory content of recycled resins in products and segregation of the waste to propose feedstock eligible to food contacts also. So still, we can imagine that there is many challenging for us, but I would like to stay, to stay optimistic and considering that uh, we are all part of the solution. So that means uh, in this, uh, in this uh, conference, we are all, uh, let's say, business owner or at least plastic consumer. Uh, so that means we, we are making choice. And where we are, we are making choice, we, we can decide to focus on a more sustainable way uh, to, to operate uh, by selecting recyclers with a good environmental impact, uh, by uh, taking some commitment to use recycled material in, in case of virgin materials as soon as we can, to consider about uh, the end of life and recyclability of all products when we are putting them into the market. So for all these reasons, we've got the power to improve the situation. <laughs> we have also the opportunity to have a look of, of let's say, what do we have in our bins? Uh, so that means um, uh, as a household or as an industry, we are generating waste. Uh, are we sure we are dealing with our waste with the most sustainable way as possible? Can we consider to segregate the waste and also to have additional value uh, thanks to that. So this is the kind of question that we, uh, we should all ask ourselves and see how we can improve the situation. And so, uh, as the SWAT mentioned, uh, there is a large panel of organizations uh, to support about uh, plastic, uh, plastic mm -hmm. circularity, like Type PPP Plastics, mm -hmm. the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, and you can also take some commitments in order to uh, implement closed loop in your operation. So there is many ways let's say, to join the team and to be part of the plastic solution in order to improve the situation. So as a conclusion, 
I will say that, okay, plastic recycling in Thailand remains very challenging because we are still suffering from a lack of regulation, which makes recycling material not attractive enough compared to virgin. So the, um, currently, the environmental benefit is underestimated. Then the low collection rates uh, create shortage, uh, which uh, do not help us to cover all fixed costs. And for all these reasons, uh, this is very challenging to operate a sustainable recycling mm -hmm. factory in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to say that uh, we should not wait to a, mag a technical magic solution mm -hmm which uh, will help us to solve the plastic crisis. Obviously, uh, during my presentation, I mentioned mostly about the uh, mechanical recycling. We can consider also about the chemical recycling. We have also some advantages. But still, mm -hmm. even whatever the technology of recycling you will take into uh, account, you need to consider that you will never be able to transform any kind of waste into gold. Uh, we need to have segregation of the waste. We need to get ready to support extra cost uh, to, uh, to avoid plastic pollution. Still, there is reason to be optimistic. There is still a huge uh, mismanaged feedstock available in Thai domestic market. So if we are able to sort, to collect and to sort properly this waste, we should be able to reduce drastically the plastic pollution. Uh, public opinion is pushing more and more to reduce plastic pollution. So we know that, let's say, new regulation will, will come, but we are just hoping that it will happen as soon as possible. And still, we have opportunity to discuss with a lot of business owners in Thailand, and we know that now uh, environment is a part of their concern and of their global strategy. But still, we need to expedite in order to be able to ensure that we will be able to continue to operate recycling PE field into Thailand because I am 100% convinced that we have a, a, a very good uh, environmental benefit in this operation, uh, but still uh, <laughs> we, need, we need some support from, from you to provide us the film uh, to be recycled and to have a look how we can change our habits in order to consume more recycled material or to reduce our uh, plastic pollution impact. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Kun David, for sharing with us these hands-on valuable experiences about plastic recycling in Thailand. Certainly a lot of information, very valuable, and uh, a lot of uh, food for thought. I totally agree with you. There is no magic solution, but we need to keep the input uh, waste plastic uh, free from contamination because the concept of garbage in and the garbage out is there. Yeah, and so, and the regulation is a key issue. Please keep your question coming for the uh, uh, Q&A session. Yeah. So uh, we have excellent presentation uh, from various sector um, and, um, share with us their genuine experience and then uh, on the ground. So I think it's been a very useful session. We are now ready to start the Q&A session. Uh, could all speaker come onto the screen, please, for the Q&A session? O o all speaker, could you, yeah, 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 um, yeah, one more. Yeah. Okay. We have all, yeah. Right. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the Solid Waste Management Association of Thailand for uh, uh, the executive committee, in particular, Kun Patarapon, our Secretary General, for his fantastic uh, work in uh, organizing this. Uh, uh, special session. Kun Patarapon, can we say hello to you, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Jindara, for oh, introduction. You're in the car. I'm still <laughs> in the van in yeah, the yeah, yeah. province. That's fine. We can see you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kun Patarapon. And uh, we, yeah, so perhaps uh, uh, you could you help me? Is there any more question from the audience? 
Uh, I think there's uh, one, just one question about the wastewater treatment from the recycling activity. But uh, Ajahn, Professor Aratai already answered, but I think we may need some more clarification because uh, from my experience, if the recycling facility is a small or medium size, normally the wastewater treatment is not so good. So there may be contamination of microplastic into treated water. So if Ajahn Aratai is still yeah. here with us, could you explain more on this part? Ajahn Aratai. Okay. Uh, maybe she's yeah. she's in yeah, another I meeting think. because she told Yeah, me. I think so. Yeah. Uh, could yeah. David can explain yeah. about his uh, wastewater treatment system from for on a big big factory perspective? What is needed yes. to make sure that there's no uh, microplastic in the treated water? Exactly, exactly. So this is this is one of the uh, important uh, parameter that we are following on a daily basis uh, on the plant. Uh, so uh, in order to ensure that we will not release uh, any uh, plastic uh, to, the, to the nature, uh, so we have a 250 uh, uh, cubic meter per hour wastewater treatment capacity, which various stage uh, from uh, filtration to start first remove, let's say, the, bigger, the biggest particle uh, more than, uh, let's say, 0.5 millimeters. And after that, we'll have a, a, a series of, uh, of tanks uh, in order to collect all uh, floating uh, contaminants and over tanks to, uh, to get all sinking uh, contaminants. So this is like this, but we are able to, to, uh, to ensure that there will be no plastic released. And in case, you know, of overflow or whatever, we've got also safety pump uh, in order to, uh, uh, to, to ensure that no one will be, will be released. So uh, definitely uh, management of the water uh, is very challenging, especially uh, when, you are, when we are talking about uh, uh, plastic, uh, plastic recycling. And uh, you can imagine that you will have uh, various uh, level of wastewater treatment station uh, in order to, to, to minimize the risk. Um, so this is why uh, uh, as let's say uh, a business owner, uh, if you are willing uh, to uh, to have a significant uh, good environmental uh, good environmental impact, I would like to recommend to select uh, suppliers uh, who are who have already environmental certification, like the green industry level three in Thailand of uh, ISO fourteen thousand and one, in order to have some evidence. Uh, but uh, but uh, management of the water and any kind of waste of operation uh, is uh, is suitable because you can I cannot imagine a, a worse scenario than uh, you know recycling material to uh, to send it back to, to the water because of leakage or whatever. This is definitely something that we do not we do we do not want to happen. Thank you. And any more question, Kun uh, Patarapon? Uh, that's an, another question about the uh, plastic bag, plastic bag recycling the situation here in Thailand that uh, Professor Ratai explained that it's uh, not fully recovered and recycled because it's not so clean. But if, if uh, we as a consumer separate from source and make sure that the plastic bag is clean, we can sell and we can uh, okay. recycle them. But um, maybe I, I asked Kun David again about the fraction of uh, the raw material that goes into your facility. Uh, how many percentage uh, from post-consumer and how many from uh, post-industrial plastic waste? So we can see that maybe the consumer uh, post-consumption maybe is still a smaller fraction. Yeah, exactly. This is a challenging part, but this is also the purpose of our, of our factory. Uh, currently, 50% of incoming material is what we call post-commercial waste. So that means uh, plastic film coming from warehouse, logistics station, and clean industry, something like that. 
and 50% is coming from household waste. So these ones are more dirty uh, plastic fill, which are significantly more challenging uh, to, to be recycled. Still, if we add opportunity to receive more of these uh, material, uh, we'll be very glad to be, uh, to be able to, to, to recycle it. Uh, currently, there is limitation on the collection also of this material. Let's say because there is most of the time there is no segregation of the waste at source uh, in most of the household, uh, which make um, the sorting and the washing of this kind of film and logic cost uh, kind of high and ineffective. So for us, long-term solution is to implement, as I mentioned, an extended producer responsibility in order to uh, to take into account uh, for the, let's say, purchasing cost of this kind of material, end of life management. And this cost will be collected in order to finance uh, collection and sorted after implementation of the segregation of at waste of source. So it will be, let's say, the um, middle term solution in order to increase significantly uh, recycling rate and minimize uh, plastic pollution. Still, uh, as a short term, we still have option to consider. So there is, uh, as shared, especially with the Rayong, uh, Rayong model, uh, there is more and more uh, drop points which are available in order to let the citizen uh, to bring their waste to make it recycled. Uh, so there is uh, various apps. Uh, so we can mention about the one project, we can mention about Recyc uh, Recycle Day. Uh, we, we can mention about many, many initiatives uh, in order to, to minimize the impact. So mm -hmm. not waiting EPR system to be implemented. As a citizen, today we've got opportunity to minimize our environmental impact. So uh, please, share, please share the advice. And I suppose that everyone will feel much better improving or own behavior. Thank you very much, Kun David. Uh, I have a question, please, for Kun Suen. Kun Suen? Yes, you. <laughs> uh, could you please unmute, unmute, please? Yeah. Um, we have been tackling uh, marine plastic pollution for several years now. How do you see the direction of travel in combating marine plastic pollution? Are we going to get there in time before we have more plastic in the ocean than fish? And what are the uh, key areas we must tackle now? Yeah, these are good questions. Uh, <laughs> we're getting so the, the, the fish stock is decreasing quite quickly. Yes. So, yeah. you know, plastic stock coming up. So we, 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 we may meet there uh, sooner than expected. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is a very, very, it is a very, it's a big variation in the fields. Different territories will have different regulations, but you know, in the end of the day, we know that certain countries will be able to kind of make sure that the systems come in place. Maybe Thailand is one of those, but, you know, maybe not quick enough. So I think by most expectations in 20 years, we will have twice of what we have today. If the only thing you do is to recycle, because then the plastic still will be in the system. And, you know, yes. we are just humans. So, you know, we, we won't do this properly. So therefore it would be wonderful to, to motivate uh, some of our uh, yeah, politicians and, and, and some of those people who are actually leading the companies that are actually responsible for the oceans suffering to get them to sense that maybe it's time for them to uh, not uh, imagine that recycling will save the oceans, but maybe their decisions to, 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 to change the packaging. And you know, it's a, it's a hard discussion to be had because it yes. will maybe impact the bottom line a little bit, but you know, we have to think a little bit grander than a tiny little uh, part of a percent on the bottom line. And that's always the challenge when it comes to business. How can you get somebody to just try a little bit harder to be a little bit better for the future? And, you know, we are, we are humans. We are stuck in this uh, circle of, uh, of not quite yeah. understanding yeah. What, what happens uh, long into the future. So I can't give you a good answer other than that, uh, you know, it comes down to each one of us. If 
all of us try to push a little yes. bit. Maybe sometimes yes. hit those right buttons yes. that certainly escalate some yeah. thought things, get some people interested in moving forward. And the plastic yeah. treaty was uplifting. You know, it seems like uh, it seems like some clear uh, potential is yeah. happening in terms of bans and, and taxation. So, but not quick enough. So I'm sorry that uh, coming from the ocean, I'm, I'm not happy being a fish. I'm not so happy right now. Right. I, but I think we will have to try harder. Yes. And everyone has to see the sense of urgency. So yes. uh, I think one thing behind us is that the consumer behavior is changing. There are more increasing demand for green products and services. And to me, that will give us a push uh, to reach our objective. So thank you, uh, Kun Suwen. I have my last question for Dr. Tanapong. Could you please unmute yourself? <laughs> Dr. Tanapong. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tanapong. Dr. Tanapong, it was such an inspiring story you gave us at Doi Tung, which is far away from many people in Thailand. In your opinion, in your opinion, what is the best way to go forward uh, to replicate this excellent practice at Doi Tung around the country? Um, so because, because Doi Tung uh, emphasized our um, concept on circular economy, so, so we have to de um, like make sure that um, people understand circular economy concept and accept that, and um, also um, not to burn the trash that much. <laughs> because yes, the, yes, the current yes. solution right now is like Absolutely. everything get burned. <laughs> yeah, should, uh, no, uh, so so Dr. Tanapong, I understand, but uh, what about sharing and uh, telling other people this successful, uh, very successful and inspirational case study to influence other people in Thailand to moving in the same direction as Doi Tung, so that Hun Suwen will be much happier. <laughs> have you started? I, I we will help. Yeah. Have you started to uh, share your best practice with other group? Um, I, I, I I share with with some groups, so, but uh, not yeah. not enough, of, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Otherwise, you would know it by now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, we so just, impressive. We just, like, small, but but, but yeah. it need to the message need to get out to the whole country. So uh, okay. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, I now would like to, crawl, uh, to draw this special session to a close. I think it has been a vibrant and educational session. We have learned about successful case study in the circular economy in private sector, social enterprise, and we learned about uh, circular economy policy and practice in Thailand. We have a critical look at the best way forward and how best to accelerate circular economy transformation. In particular, the very important area of sustainable plastic waste management and recycling, closed loop recycling, upcycling, and thinking beyond recycling which would help combat the global crisis of marine plastic pollution. To me, Thailand have come a long way in circular economy, but we have to accelerate the transformation because environment impact from inadequate waste management, especially plastic, it, it affecting Thailand and other country. So to me, collaboration is key to success. To me, this has been a very positive experience to learn and share and, and, and look at not just challenges, but opportunity. And I feel this will help Thailand moving forward in sustainable waste management and circularity. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for your participation. And could you please join me in thanking our fantastic speaker
for their contribution to this special session. Thank you. Arigato gozaimas and have a good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Chindala thank and you. all the thank panelists you, for a great and wonderful presentation. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you too. Bye. Bye. And then uh, please uh, uh, go to the next session, which is the last session on today, uh, which is a okay. creative session. Yeah, as you can see is a monitor. Yeah, uh, so you can just click the creative session. Yeah, thank you so much. See you then. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye.